Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. This is I Allegedly. And uh, i got a good one for you today because the sun is setting on the economy right now. It's setting on a few things. It's setting on real estate and uh, it's uh, definitely setting on the economy right now. There's a lot to cover. And uh, before I get into it, please take a second. Please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Uh, share it with everybody. And uh, let's get into it. Real estate right now is basically in the sunset of the uh, of uh, this uptick that we've seen over the last, let's say, 12 or 14 years. It's finally seen its heyday. And there's a lot of articles that I've got in the video description below that show you that real estate has absolutely cratered and it's starting to take the turn. Now, first thing is that April, the final four weeks of April, we saw over 15% of all the listings in real estate here in the United States that had been lowered, okay? Nah, it's not that big of a deal, Dan, no big deal. It's nothing, well it is, it's a huge deal. But also, what you're seeing is that interest rates have absolutely shot up to where, think about this, the average home price in April was over $404,000. That is insane, guys. That is the highest it's ever been. It had hit 357,000 last month, and now it's $404,000. Now, here in Southern California, it's a, a wacky market where you can't go out and you can't buy anything remotely close to that for 400 grand. You just can't. You can't buy a one-bedroom condo for that. So, with that being said, you know it's all relative to where you're at, but. One thing that's fascinating is that I have a lot of people that send me stuff from all over the world. And we are having the same problem that Australia is having. Uh, Australia is having the same problem that the UK is having when it comes to real estate. So no one is living on an island right now. And gee, our problem is different than everybody else's. They're all the same right now. And it's crazy right now. So I'm at the, at the bottom of the montage right now. Just a beautiful spot when the sun goes down, just to show you guys this, because it's just one of those places that, uh, man, it's just stunning. But think about this, Australia, I get a kick out of this, because Australian rents, guys, are figured on a weekly basis. You don't sit there and go, hey, I wanna rent this place, how much is it a month? They say it's 550 bucks a week. Okay, it's $2,200 a month. But they figure all the rents there by the week, which I always thought was crazy. And talking to Australians, that's how they do it. Now here's the thing. Rents in Australia are at an all-time high. They've never been this high. $500 a week gets you nothing. It gets you something substandard. It doesn't get you someplace average. It gets you something to get by for a one-bedroom place in Australia, in the bigger cities. Now you can live in the outlying areas and get deals and things like this, but I'm talking normal cities you know that have a, a you know a metropolis around it now you can compare that to new york city because i just got off the phone with somebody who's looking at new york properties and cannot find anything for one bedroom under four thousand dollars a month so that's crazy absolutely nuts guys four thousand dollars a month to get a one bedroom place and you know it's not nice you know it's nothing Nothing substantial out here. I'm just gonna stand here, guys, and let you guys see the beauty of this as I pontificate all this facts I study. So, it's nuts, okay? Think about this. The average house payment a year ago on the average house, okay? First things first, it was $1,404, okay? Well, that's, that's kind of high. Well, now, now it's over $2,500 for that same house. That is insane, guys. The average interest rate right now is 5.22% for these new lows. That's done, guys. This is going to absolutely kill the market. It's absolutely going to kill everything that we know as far as financing, as far as every industry. Where did more people build their wealth? They build it in uh, real estate. What do more people save for retirement in real estate? Yeah, you've got your 401k. Yeah, you've got things like that. But the problem with it is that the majority of these people have made their money, maybe getting a second rental house, 
but the majority of their assets are tied up into uh, real estate, which is just, you know, it's how it is. But right now, you're gonna see more and more people that are going to lose money in this. So, it's not, again, I wanna talk about this. People have talked about, Dan, I bought my house five years ago, and you know I bought it here for 300,000. Now they're going for 800,000. Why should I sell it? Don't sell your house. If you can comfortably make the payment, and you're not stuck, and it's not, you don't have an adjustable mortgage that's gonna uh, ding you, uh, then you've got nothing to worry about. But these adjustables, the Australian market, you know, let's talk about that one first. This last week we talked about over 300,000 people that when they have the next rate increase, they're going to potentially lose their homes. It's over half a million people now that can lose their homes in Australia because of the adjustable rate mortgages that are going to shoot up. So, I'll show you guys something. I walked on that beach three weeks ago with you guys and the entire uh, coast was open and I walked down, the tide was out. I always get a kick out of these people that live with the seawall like this and have the uh, waves bounce against it, guys, because, yeah, wouldn't that be beautiful and it would be so serene until you get real waves because as crazy as this looks, this is nothing. When there's a storm, when there's something, yes, you've got this beautiful seawall that's going to protect you, but will it? So that's, that's the one thing you have to, you know, think about if, when you live down in a place like this. Now, turn back this way. Redfin, Zillow, all these places that keep track of all the records that we like to keep record, that we like to look at and get different numbers for real estate are talking about how everything is turning right now. There are more markets that have uh, price adjustments than they've ever had. Now you can say 15% is no big deal and I'm gonna get people that are gonna tell me how great it is in their economy, but it's not, guys. It is a huge problem when you've got when you've got large swaths of uh, homes that are not completed yet, that uh, uh, they've sold in advance, that again, you know, how long can you lock in an, uh, an interest rate for with a home loan? 60 days, 90 days, how long will a bank do that? I, I can't imagine being longer than that. These houses are taking six and seven months longer than they're supposed to. People are gonna have to re-qualify for these homes and you're gonna see an absolute travesty with this right now. So there's that. There are such crazy things with real estate here in California. Think about this one. There is a house where you can get you can either buy and get partial home ownership or you can rent with other adults where an investor has bought a house and you can have 14 people live in the same home and you get a cubicle to sleep in. Now, think about this. The older I get, the more I work till two o'clock in the morning, the more I get up at 5.30 in the morning and walk the dog and, uh, you know, maybe I'll go, you know, watch the news, but whatever I'm gonna do, I do it at my own pace, guys. I don't have to worry about 13 other people. Could you imagine living in a cubicle that is a little, it's probably about the size of a prison cell, but you have a ladder that you go up to on your level, you can have somebody below you, and there's 14 people that live there, And but you get to live in San Jose, California for $800 a month. Now, think about this. You've got two bathrooms, you get to, um, Share the kitchen, isn't that nice? Probably a nice house, probably a big house that they put these in, probably higher end, but oh my God, could you imagine that? Think about what I'm telling you and how sick that is because I couldn't imagine uh, living in a place like this. I have a friend who was having a down period a couple years ago, and actually it was a year and a half ago, okay? And his sister was like, listen, let me rent you, breaking up with a girlfriend, needed to get a place. His sister said, I rented you a room in this house, okay? Nice house, big house, five bedroom house, and you get your own room in this place. He shows up there the night, and there is probably 25 people playing pool, uh, drinking, smoking pot, just craziness on a Sunday night. And he's like, what in the hell is this? Yeah, we kind of get together certain nights to have parties. It's a Sunday night, guys, okay? So there's that. And he walks upstairs and this guy knocks his door to you. Hey, you're the new guy? 
you better not make noise because I get up at five o'clock in the morning. And he's like, what in the hell is this? There's all this noise downstairs. Uh, don't worry about me. What about these people? Oh, they're fine. They know not to bother me. So everybody downstairs that was partying late on a 10.30 on a Sunday night knew not to bother this guy. But could you imagine living like that? And again, a frat house is one thing. But as an adult, and yeah, you gotta make sacrifices, and people are down in their luck, and there's changes that have to be made in your life, and you gotta make some, you know, save some money and stuff like that. But this was living hell, and he could not handle it. And he refused to live under these conditions, and didn't stay one night at this place and demanded his money back. So, calls me, whoa. Uh, waves are getting a little big, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna move. Um, I'll go up a little higher, okay? He uh, um, calls me and tells me the story, and I'm like, dang, let me, let me think about what I can do. And in the city that I live in, this was actually Irvine, the city next door, there were some new, uh, some new hotels that had just gotten built, and at the time, a year ago, a year ago in January, nobody was renting hotel rooms in January of 2021, so this guy goes out and I start calling these places and they go, hey, we've got a deal right now. You can stay in one of the hotel rooms for $1,630 for the month. We'll clean the room every other day for you and uh, you stay in the hotel room. You got TV, you got everything, a cable, got it all. So I call him and I said, you got this deal. So the deal of the year for that guy. And I think he lived there two months, you know, but no deposit, just paid it and that was that. You know, and again, brand new hotel that wasn't able to get guests to travel and things like that during that time. So they rented things out on a monthly basis. You're going to see more shenanigans and craziness and desperation from people. There are going to be people that will not be able to make their house payments when these things adjust that they're going to start renting rooms out to everybody under the sun. The problem with it is that you have, you can think Airbnb and oh, it's great and everything's gonna be fantastic. There are so many regions like where I'm living in Orange County that they limit the number of Airbnbs that you can have. So that'll be interesting. Another great story about how we've got serious problems coming with two things here on the West Coast. First thing is water shortage. We have such a massive water shortage coming here on the West Coast that um, that they don't that water rationing is going to be mandatory as of June first, and people are not going to be able to uh, water their lawns more than once a week. What does this do to a golf course? Okay, what does it do if you have a garden? What does it do if if you you know is your garden consider your yard? Uh, and, and again, I've heard things as low as 55 gallons for an entire household for water per day. I don't know how you can do a load of wash and bathe at the same time and flush the toilet a few times if that's the case. The next thing is the problem with, uh, with uh, power outages. The entire western part of the United States is going to have severe power outages. Now here's the thing. Last year when Texas had that cold spell and they had those, uh, those meters that were controlled by the independent power companies. That is ridiculous that there were families that could not turn their thermostat on and then there were fam families that had um, uh, energy bills for $6,000 for a month uh, because of the cold spell. That's insane, guys. You're going to see more and more things like this. And here we are in May, but I had people write me today, hey, Dan, it snowed where I live today. That's insane, guys. Could, so imagine that you're going to have power outages and we need to get to green energy and we need to get to wind and all that stuff. It has not worked in Germany. It's not gonna work here. And look at England and how the price of everything has gone through the roof. Read the comments in the video description below and look at what people write me about how, how energy costs have just shut through the roof. God, this is really beautiful. You guys, last time we were here, I walked down on that whole section, but the tide is in so much right now that uh, that's what we're dealing with. The sun setting is absolutely stunning. Next thing is all the problems with, uh, with railways. There are, is going to be basically a railway shortage because of two things. There's not enough products to put on the railway. There's not enough workers to work on the railways right now. 
And again, what is it with all these people? There's all, supposedly all these jobs out there that nobody wants to do, and uh, unemployment's at the lowest level, but we just added 300,000 people, 346,000 people, but all these companies are laying off. It makes zero sense to anybody with, with half a brain that's going through this stuff. So you are not on an island, guys. You are not living in, well, this is only unique to the United States. No, this is happening everywhere, guys. Absolutely everywhere. But a great article that I did find, find out of England was that inflation is the thing that kills uh, uh, economies. It kills the poorest people. It kills the working class people. And the problem with the inflation announcement this week is that isn't it kind of unique that we're going to announce our inflation number uh, inflation numbers this week, and so is England at the same time. And but England's in better shape than we are because they're they're well under ten percent. La 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 la. Nobody believes it. And if you read from my last video, everybody in England wrote and said the same thing. It's insane, Dan. What we're paying for everything has gone through the roof. Let's talk about Mother's Day, for, for example. Mother's Day at restaurants went up. Think about this. Hey, come eat mom. Dinner, you know, dinner uh, with mom for two will be $50, okay? $110 specials all over the place here in Orange County. That's insane, guys. It's not, it's not feasible for the average person to go out and spend $110 for two people because you got two kids. And then you add them into the mix, you're gonna spend $250 at a restaurant to wish mom a happy Mother's Day. You know, she's worth it, but there's better ways to spend the money, and it's outrageous that we're all getting caught up in this right now. The seafood prices, the natural energy, hey Bob, how you doing? Okay, everything that we're going through is outrageous right now, guys. It's all through the roof. And look at the size of these people's dog. What kind of dog is that? Oh, he's beautiful. Mind if I just get one quick picture? <laughs> Huge, okay? Oh my God. <laughs> wow, amazing. So the sun's setting, guys. Setting on the economy. Get ready. Plan. Do everything you can right now to Get your finances in order. Get your house in order, your security. Look at getting some silver, physical silver. When they announce these inflation numbers this week, they're going to jack up interest rates. Do not borrow money unless you have to. If you were a client of mine and if you were going to go out and you were going to move your business forward, if you are part of the drought area here in Southern California, you can get EIDL money. If you've been affected, you think the drought has affected your business, you can go to the SBA and get uh, you can get EIDL money right now. It's absolutely amazing. But the point of this is that, do you want to borrow money? Do you want to borrow money to put a fire out? Because your problem is, after you put the fire out, you still owe everybody the money. So that's the problem that I always tell people, is don't borrow money unless you absolutely have to or it's gonna propel your business forward. Don't do that right now. There's such shortages right now at all these different stores. And one thing that I got a kick out of is people are sending me the story about Aldi, the chain that's big in Germany. Now they're here and now they're demanding. They won't take cash at a lot of these stores now and that's freaking people out. Well, that's how it is here, you know? It, think about this, uh, is that the baseball game? And you cannot pay cash for anything. You can't pay cash for parking. Can't pay cash to buy a hot dog. The vendor comes down the uh, the aisle to sell you a Coke, say an ice cream, say anything, a beer, anything. You've got to pay cash for that. Uh, you've got to use the card bank. End of story. So it's kind of the way it's turning to. But again, that's a digital lifestyle, guys, that they want to stick to all of us. Bitcoin is suffering right now but they're saying is this is it bad or is this just a sign of the times with things getting shaken up right now so you know as i learn more about the cryptocurrencies i think that there's a lot to uh, uh 
to this. I think as far as the blockchain, there's a lot to it. But I don't think that uh, we've heard the last of any of these, these uh, countries that are adopting Bitcoin, cities that are adopting Bitcoin. It's only going to expand right now. And a lot of these people think that there's going to be, that have written me, have said that there's going to be a fallout with cryptocurrencies where it's going to crash. Uh, and then stocks are going to crash and then Bitcoin's going to, and everything else is going to take off. So, again, I'm too stupid to know the answer to that right now. I'm not educated enough to give you guys an answer. But make a decision on this stuff if that's for you or not. Because I don't know you well enough yet if it is. When you look at all the shortages with food, with transportation, with diesel, how they cannot get diesel fuel right now. This is absolutely catastrophic, guys. This is something that you need to look at and you need to, to understand that we're going to have such massive shortages, they say, between June, July, and August when it comes to food. So, again, if you were told this, whether, whether you're watching me and you think, oh, that guy's kind of an idiot, or oh, maybe I'll listen to Dan, just go stock up. Go get enough food to live for you know, the extreme people, the preppers, They've got years worth of food. I think you should talk about months inside your family. I think you should talk about preparing so that you guys have enough to get through a difficult period of time. Remember, we could never get locked down, put in our house. That could never happen. And it did. Now, what would happen if you had to live there for a month? People here in Southern California, we prepare a lot for the earthquakes. The smart ones have an earthquake uh, kit to live in the house for you know, 14 to 30 days. A lot of people don't think that's enough. So, the more I research this stuff, <laughs> I don't think it's nearly enough. But, real estate, they want you to buy houses. They want you to go out and get these adjustable rate loans. Please do not do that. Do not get an adjustable rate mortgage. You can be told, oh, you know, when the next election comes around, rates are gonna drop again. Maybe not, guys. Maybe not. You know, I had an adjustable loan 30 years ago. That's how old I am. And uh, it was when that payment got that envelope and I opened it. Oh my God. Okay. It was horrific. You don't want that. You want to uh, prepare yourself for this. So, just a quick video today to get you guys ready. Everything is off right now. Everything points to getting these inflationary numbers and seeing where they're gonna go. But the stock market is definitely in a precarious spot and it's going to go. If you look at the experts, you know, the latest expert that I found, you know, he was talking about how stock market's gonna go down. The S&P 500 is at, you know, 4,100 right now and then he sees it going down to 3,000, which was the rate that we saw in May of 2020. So think about that, guys. It's shot up so much during this time. He sees it going down to at least that again. A lot of people can say, oh, that's no big deal. Guys, it's horrific, guys. 25%, okay? So share your thoughts on all this stuff, guys. Let me know what you think. Please don't forget that I have a Patreon channel if you want more access to me. Uh, I've got an email list that you can sign up for in the video description below. And uh, I appreciate each and every one of you guys being here. Onward and upward, guys. And I, I will see you. Thank you. I will Thank see you, you very too. soon.